So, having established that the uh, vacuum dryer doesn't actually have a vacuum in it. Thankfully, the Morris Zero uses vacuum technology. No, not that vacuum, space vacuum. That's pretty impressive for a device that raised over $2 million on various crowdfunders based on that claim. Combined with its infrared heating system, it can dry your clothes in as little as 15 minutes. Yeah, but can it? And does it have any infrared heating in it at all? Thanks to ultraviolet cleaning, Morris eliminates up to 99.9% .9 of bacteria. Comes the next interesting question. Does the ultraviolet sterilization of this amazing vacuum dryer actually have any ultraviolet in it? For which you might need something like, say, for instance, a spectrometer and a computer to tell you what that spectrum is going to look like. Good. So now I've got the spectrometer set up. So it gives you a fairly wide spectrum. This is the violet down here. This is the ultraviolet over here. This is the far ultraviolet over here. This is really quite nasty stuff. Fairly harmful to everything, including you. And so what this will tell you is the spectrum of whatever this thing is pointing at. So let's start off with what a regular uh, LED light source would look like. It's a bit tricky to get it on the right scale. There we go. So that's what your typical LED spectrum looks like. So there's a bit in the purple and a sort of fairly broad wide angle spectrum. Now let's compare that to what we get for the LED on our Morris. And it looks almost exactly like a regular white LED. There is no ultraviolet here at all. But how could we be really certain of that? Well, maybe if we had a nice little box of LEDs, we could identify exactly which LED they've used for their uh, ultraviolet sterilization. Now, according to this, this is actually an ultraviolet LED. So let's see what that looks like compared to the Morris. Okay, so this is what an uh, uh, ultraviolet looks like. So as you can see, he really is on the ultraviolet end of things over here, which is nothing like what Morris was. And my reckoning is that it's just a standard white LED, which is one of these. And we find <laughs> it looks exactly like the Morris LED, uh, which means that the vacuum dryer not only doesn't contain a vacuum, but its ultraviolet sterilization contains no ultraviolet. And just to really drive that point home, let's take a look at Morris again. And it's exactly the same white LED. There is no ultraviolet in this thing at all. And whilst we're here, just for shits and giggles, let's see what some other LEDs look like. So this is green. And green gives you a nice big single peak in the green part of the spectrum. The blue LED, these are the sort of standard blue ones that you get. And you can see, so the, the actual white LED is a combination of a blue LED and another couple, yeah. Okay, this is red. This is orange. And lastly, let's give pink a go, gotcha. And pink, curiously, is another one of these guys who looks like he's a sort of mix of two. So you got a purple one and a bit of a red one in there. Right, I think we're almost at the scam starter autopsy stage. But before we get there, let's test this claim about it can dry your clothes in as little as 15 minutes. Combined with its infrared heating system, it can dry your clothes in as little as 15 minutes. Good. So now what we can do is a test of the super fast dryer versus the oh, clothes line. So we're going to need two identical batches of clothes. Hopefully we have two bunches of five t-shirts. The first one is going to weigh in at 1.45 kilos and that's going to go into the Morris. And the second lot, uh, 
should also be about 1.45 kilos. Good. Right. So now both have about 1.45 kilos in each. Let's go to it. So we'll start up the Morris. That's the Morris going. on the clothesline, they're not even in the sunshine. He's done. So, now let's see how this actually goes in terms of the weight. So, previously, of course, we had one and a half kilos of stuff in there. The $600 super dryer, it's still moist, definitely wet to the touch. And there was a stray sock that creeped in there somehow, which I suppose we have to put in there as well. Okay, so the super dryer, let's make sure that we're all independent there, gets us down from 1,400, um, sorry, 1.45 kilos to 1.27 kilograms. So the line feels wetter and heavier, but let's just see what it comes out to. It might just be that it's colder. And... Make sure that's all in. So it is actually modestly more effective. That's what, it's 1.35, uh, whatever, 1.36. And of course, just to prove the point, let's see how much is condensed in the drain tray. And the answer is not a single drop of water. We boiled off almost 200 grams of water into the environment and didn't condense a single drop of water. And when the detachable tank is full, you just remove it, dump the water, and it's good to go. So after an hour or so, I need to know how much the clothes weigh when they're dry. Good, so we know the clothes weighed about one and a half kilos when they're wet, so let's see how much they weigh when they're nice and dry. So I'll zero it up, let's see if we can Get that all in there, super. And it weighs a pretty good 0.9 kilos when it's dry, or 900 grams, which means there was about eh, 500 odd grams of water in those clothes. And we know that the Morris here would take off about 200 grams in about 15 minutes, which means that the uh, super fast dryer here would take somewhat over half an hour to dry five t-shirts. It can dry your clothes in as little as 15 minutes. The world needs this. Cool. So we're drying about a kilo of laundry in the Morris in about half an hour. Is that fast? Well, no. I mean, let's take a look at which review of dryers. Compact dryers, they say, dry a kilo of clothes in about half an hour. Well, actually, they say the uh, slower vented compact dryers take about half an hour, which is, boom, almost exactly what you get with the Morris Zero. Whereas, of course, larger dryers will dry a kilo of laundry in about half that time, in about the, the time that they claim the super fast dryer would actually dry your clothes in. Now, my read on this is this is basically down to scalability. All of these dryers work on the same basic principle of blowing warm, dry air over your clothes. And if you put twice as many clothes in the dryer and blow twice as much air over it, you get twice as much water off, which means that you actually have the same drying time, but for more laundry. So it halves the drying time per kilogram of laundry. And this is where the clothesline is fantastic. I mean, on a nothing special day, it would take just over an hour to dry five t-shirts on a clothesline like this, where the Morris Zero would do it faster in about 35 minutes. But of course, if I wanted to say dry 10 t-shirts, it would also take just about an hour 
on a clothesline, whereas the uh, super fast dryer would now take over an hour to dry those same t-shirts. The super fast dryer would actually be slower than the clothesline. Okay, it's go time. Hey, Tink. Hang in there. Let's get the seal out. And what do we got? It's held in by a load of flip screws. ring on the inside of that and <laughs> screws excellent this looks like it's one of those annoying things where it's, it, it's, it's popped in I think this calls for a more unorthodox solution. Right, so not a lot of people would know this, but polyethylene gets yeah, fairly soft at about 150 degrees. So if you actually want to get into something like this, just to take a look on the inside, I'm going to cut this bit out here. But first of all, I need to soften it up. I need to cook the plastic just a little. Get it up to the point where I can basically cut it with a spatula, not a spatula, a scalpel. Should be about now. That works almost perfectly. Oops. Let's bring it up top a little. So we're just softening up the plastic. And once it's nice and soft, it'll cut not quite like butter, but fairly close. And we flesh it comes up again. So obviously it cools down again. kind of hot, you have to be a bit careful, it'll be about 100 degrees, it'll be over 100 degrees, you can burn yourself with it, if you grab the hot bits, and, okay, so there we have the problem immediately, I think we're more or less done with that, you can see what the problem is through the hole, they're all screws holding this on on the back, so there would have been absolutely zero chance of getting this off from this direction, which means I have to go in via another route. Yeah, you see this all do not uh, cut sign. Let's try and get in here, shall we? Ah, I know what it is. I know what it is. It is just four screws on the bottom, then the whole case just slides off. Let's get these boys off. There's another one. I'll just hold on with sticky tape, of course. Completely normal. Okay, my camera cut off. I'm not sure how much I lost there. Um, right, so we've actually got in the back now, 
and they clearly had a go at making this thing a condenser dryer in that this thing here is meant to be a condenser and there is actually a tube that comes out the back there that's meant to go down to the water collection tray obviously it's completely ineffective because usually you you make heat exchange things out of metal you know good thermal conductor plastic eh, not so much i didn't do this this is weird I didn't do this. It looks like they redesigned it at some point and just reused the pieces. Yep, I didn't break these off. They changed the design on this at some point. It looks like they had the old cases and they just broke off pieces with a pair of pliers or something um, in, in these places. Like here, yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, this this is me around the edge here, sort of chopping away. But this is broken off. This is broken off, just there. And there's another one over here. Okay, so this is modestly interesting. Right, still not got into it. Okay, looks like the whole thing does just slide out. Okay, here's the hole I cut earlier. Aha, progress. Cleaned out, there's a cut already. I think there's a screw. Oh, I think there's a screw in there. Feels wrong. Everything else is good. Just missing the screw. I knew I shouldn't have put this thing back in. And if you're wondering what I mean by that, when I first got my hands on this thing, fresh out of the box, that light fitting had fallen out. But uh, anyway, what I was about to show you is that if you take a look at this bit, this is sort of just out of the box. It, it, it's fallen off already. It, it, it's all loose. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is. And I had to put it back in. Do worry of pulling to get those out. Okay, got that back in. And if you're being generous, you would say, well, fine, I, I got a defective one. Until you look around online and find, say, for instance, a Japanese review of the Morris Zero, and you find that got a loose LED on it as well. Unfortunately, I think I can remember how he pops it out. Alright. So at some point, we'll take a look at that and figure out if it is exactly what LED I thought it was. My reckoning was there's going to be a screw in there, wasn't it? Oh, what's this? What's this? Let's just give it a good hard wiggle and see what that does for us. That sounded hopeful. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Victory is mine! Thanks to the... Uh, kitchen there you go so in the back there's just a bunch of power cables you've got to disconnect before you can get this thing out right it's the reveal time are you ready you two here we go and there it is oh we've got some cables still connected actually there's glue in it which i've i've never seen before that's incredible it's got glue in it it's got hot it's hot glue there we go okay you won't be able to see it's actually glue holding this thing in. This is like, huh, I've never seen that before. Cool, right, let's see what we got. Ah, here we go. This looks hopeful. These, okay, I understand how it works now. Good, right. So what happens is it's gonna suck air in here 
and it's going to, yep, there's heating elements in these. These are your heating elements, and they blow hot air in the front, and it sucks out the back, and it, it's going to go through the air that comes out, comes through this thing, but this is almost completely pointless because what's meant to happen is it's going to blow air over this that makes it cooler, and then it condenses and runs out the bottom here. In reality, that doesn't happen because, um, yeah, um, this is, this would have to be metal and you'd, uh, then it basically becomes a condenser dryer. So inside this thing is, uh, those, those things there, those are the wheels for spinning the drum. Not quite sure why it's in a very nice Perspex box like that, but whatever. Yeah, so you get the light just about right. Heating elements are down at the bottom there. Okay, so let's get the condenser off. And just a bit of silicone tubing. So presumably that means this guy is the fan. Yeah, in which case it's it's a lot heavier tutier than a hairdryer. I'll give them that. That's a that's a bigger motor than a hairdryer. Uh, the heating elements is what takes most of the power, of course. Those will be very similar to a hairdryer. And in this one, you yeah, actually see it. They've got a just in there. You see, there's a temperature sensor or overheat by the looks of things. Uh, in there, you should get a pretty good view of the heating element, or that wire coil thing there. Combined with its infrared heating system, it can dry your clothes in as little as 15 minutes. The world needs this. Yeah, so there's no infrared heating in this thing at all. All there is is like a, a heating element very similar to what you would get in a hairdryer. Let's get inside one of these boys. Okay, let's see what these things look like on the inside. And that's your heating element. And that will actually be pretty similar to what you have in a hairdryer. This is the sort of power. Oh, is he just uh, clipped in there? Is he just open? Maybe he does. It looks like a glass fiber of some sort. Stop. Just pushes open. That easy. <laughs> That's awesome. And I get myself a beautiful little heating element here. Oh, that's really quite nice. So that is actually very similar to what you have in a hairdryer. In hairdryers, they tend to be coils, and the coils go around in a circle. But other than that, the heating wire is almost exactly the same. It even looks like there's a thermal cutout in there. Yeah, it's quite nice. So I think the original idea was that they were going to suck the air in from the outside. It was going down the heating elements here, and then it's blown out the, the little holes at the front there. And then it sucks out the back here, and it goes out from there into this sort of condenser unit where you're getting the hot, moist air coming out here and you've got the cool air being sucked in from outside here, having the inlet and the outlet right next to each other. Not so smart. But also, um, yeah, this is the real problem. Is <laughs> This doesn't look so good for a condenser dryer. Uh, condensers usually need lots of surface area, and they need good thermal um, contact between all these things. So that's actually what the condenser looks like from a condenser dryer. So the, the warm air comes in through here from the dryer. This is the moist air from your wet clothes and it blows out the back there. And what then, then you get the cool air from outside being sucked through the all these radiator fins. So there's a huge amount of surface area on these things. And of course it's all metal, which makes your heat transfer pretty effective. Whereas with this thing, it's plastic and it's not got great surface area. I mean, you just compare the surface area and the materials to these things and it's eh, it's maybe not unsurprising why it's not so good. Now this is for completeness. 
Right, this is the uh, LED that this thing had on it. And if you actually take it apart, you will very curiously find that it has on the label here, on this side, just there, it says UV LED, which means that there may actually be two LEDs in there and, and one of them turns on when the door is open and then the UV one turns on for when it's drying. So it's conceivable that I was wrong about them. And also, if you actually zoom in on this old printed circuit board here, it says light LED and UV LED. So, you know, we gotta be honest about this. Let's see if we can get that working and get a spectrum off their UV LED. So these look like they're the four LEDs that I was looking at earlier. And so we hook that up permanently, like that. And we take a look at what the spectrum looks like. There we go, Santa rays a little. And it looks incredibly like the white light source that we had earlier. Now, bizarrely enough, <laughs> it's running on three volts. The other wire presumably runs at seven volts and is the UV LED in the middle. So um, we'll see what this looks like. But UV, um, it depends. If it really is over here, then yeah, you gotta be a bit careful with these things. So let's see what we get. Okay, so he's now all hooked up. Now the suggestion is that it starts working at seven volts from uh, yeah the circuitry that I've looked at. So let's dial up the volts. And we're at four volts. 5 volts. Oh, there it is. Holy shit, there is actually a UV LED in here. 6 volts. That's enough. Hey, that's actually a real. Here we are, we're at 6.6 .6 volts. It does actually have a UV LED in here. And obviously I'm not pointing there. Actually, I can close my eyes and point it at the camera. Let's see what that does. I'm not going to take a look at this, but uh, there, that's what it looks like. So there we go. It does actually have an ultraviolet LED in there. Pat pumps off the heat, this thing, by the way. I might have to get the thermal camera on this thing to see how hot it runs, but uh, that notwithstanding, I was wrong. This thing does have an uh, ultraviolet LED in it. How effective it is at sterilizing stuff, I don't know. Oh my word, yeah, yeah, that's that's like crazy hot. Uh, yeah, they obviously don't run it for that long. Oh yeah, I think I might burn myself on that. So the guy in the middle is the ultraviolet LED. Right, let's get the thermal camera on that and see what it looks like. Super, so now we've got the thermal camera here and it's pointing at the computer. So obviously the thermal camera is showing you that this is where the CPU of the computer is because it's nice and warm and there's my hand and you yeah these things are quite sensitive they'll tell you you know quite happily you know where the cold bits on your hand and all that sort of thing comes the question i'm going to point it away from me you know uv you got to be a bit careful with uv so let's have uh yeah so even if i just touch this thing you'll see that you know just me touching it for a couple of seconds will actually warm it up a little uh but we're what at 26 degrees Good, right, now let's turn it on and see what the heat generation is like at about 7 volts. Boom, we're on. So we're running at 6.9 volts, we're up to uh, 40 degrees. This is what I meant, I burnt my fingers on this. We're up to 70, 80, 90, yeah, so clearly they can't run this thing continuously. It's over 100 degrees already, and at that point I'm turning it off. Yeah, that's that's why I burnt my fingers on this thing. Yeah, this is why you'd normally put heat sinks on these things. But at least it does produce ultraviolet radiation. And just to give you some idea of you know the difference to power of these things, and I'm going to clip on the white LEDs, and we'll see how much heat they generate. And the answer is not a lot. So the white LEDs you know, generate almost no heat. The um, ultraviolet, on the other hand, I think it's pretty toasty.
And just to really highlight that, that's what it looks like after running for just, uh, I don't know how long I run it for, 30 seconds, a minute, but you can see it's melted all of the, what was, plastic fairing around there. It's just a piece of foam, but yeah. Um, if they're going to run this thing, they're going to run it for short periods of time without melting everything. So I, I know, I suppose I could try and pull it back together and see if this thing does actually turn on. I mean, the simple truth is I don't know how much sterilization you're going to get from a single uh, UV LED like this. Um, so, I don't know, maybe, maybe I should put it back together again and uh, see how long the, the LED actually turns on for. So let's summarize, shall we? The uh, super fast vacuum dryer neither contained a vacuum nor was it super fast. Its uh, infrared heating system didn't exist, but in fairness, it did actually contain an ultraviolet LED, although that did kind of melt the surrounding plastic if you ran it for more than 30 seconds. But on the bright side, it would actually dry your clothes faster than a clothesline if you were drying less than five t-shirts. And of course, it would dump exactly the same amount of moist air into your room due to its laughably poor condenser. But I gotta be fair, this thing was actually built and put together quite nicely. It's just it didn't do any of the miraculous super things that it claimed it would do, which was the entire Techno Ponzi core of the sales pitch. You know, it's kind of like the uh, full self-driving of tumble dryers. But whatever, I enjoyed taking this thing apart. And if you enjoyed it too, maybe give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And if you really like the work of this channel, you can support it directly through Patreon. Thanks for watching.